We discussed the ACH Operation Bulletin number 5, 2020, that gave us some relief on having signatures on a WASUD during the pandemic. Well, NACHA came out with a bulletin before that one. It's ACH Operations Bulletin number 4, 2020. We need to discuss that, so stay tuned. In this video, we're going to focus on ACH Operations Bulletin number 4, 2020. NACHA extends effective dates on data security rule, affirms effective dates on other rules, and this, well, this was released March 26 of 2020. The official summary. The upcoming effective dates of the rule of supplementing data security requirements are extended by one year to June 30th, 2021 and June 30th, 2022, respectively. The effective dates of other approved and upcoming rules remain in effect. What's that mean to the industry? NACHA has realized we have some dates coming up that rules are supposed to go into effect and due to the pandemic, that's just not very reasonable. So they have changed the dates. Maybe it's not just due to the pandemic, but it definitely plays into it. What is the supplementing data security rule? We have a more detailed video on this rule on the Payments Professor YouTube site. So please subscribe there if you do happen to go there, and that way you never miss a video. We also have a series on industry and rules updates out there on our website, paymentsprofessor.com. But back in November 2018, NACHA approved a set of rule changes that were related to ACH quality and also to risk management. Included in this, or included in part of those rules, was changes that was to supplement the existing rules on data security. And under this new rule, well, ACH originators and third parties are required to further protect account information while it's at rest. And in response to requests from some covered parties for additional time to come into compliance with the rule requirements, NACHA is extending each of the two effective dates by one year. Phase one of the rule, that one applies to ACH originators and third parties with more than 6 million ACH payments annually. That's now gonna become effective June 30th, 2021. Phase two of the rule, which applies also to ACH originators and third parties, but in this case with more than 2 million ACH payments annually, will be effective on June 30th of 2022. It should be noted that the parties involved, well, you're still urged to be compliant with the new rule as soon as you can, but no later than those new effective dates. The original rule language was provided and is explained in supplement number 2-2018 to the NACHA operating rules, where it outlined how there are to be policies, procedures, and systems that must do several things. First of all, protect the confidentiality and integrity of protected information. Protect against anticipated threats or hazards to the security or integrity of protected information. And protect against unauthorized use of protected information that could result in substantial harm to a natural person. The new rule supplements those existing rules by requiring ACH originators and third parties to protect account information used in ACH payments by rendering it unreadable when it's stored electronically or at rest. The pandemic and this bulletin does not affect every rule change that is upcoming though. Just be aware of that. NACHA also clearly stated in the bulletin that ACH participants must be aware that the effective date of two other rules are going to remain in effect. What are those? Well, one's coming up really soon. That is the upcoming April 1st, 2020, differentiating unauthorized return reasons. Beginning on the effective date, RDFIs may begin to use a return reason code R11 for a debit for which there is an error, but for which there is an existing authorization. You see, this one, it differentiates R11 returns from those using R10, which will still mean that a customer claims a debit was not authorized. That's what R10 is. Yes, I know the effective date of this rule is imminent, but do realize that ACH participants have had nearly a whole year to prepare for this so it's not being extended. We actually need this one to go in effect. But NACHA did say that RDFIs that are not ready to use R11 as of April 1st should 
continue to use R10. We mentioned the use of R10 in a recent video in relation to processing through the pandemic and the R11 rule change will help. And yes, of course, we have videos also available on our YouTube site and our paymentsprofessor.com website that go into more detail on this should you want more information. And finally in the bulletin though, there is a rule that does not have a change to it being completed. That is gonna be by October 30th, 2020, the ACH contact registry. We need this one now more than ever. See, financial institutions participating in the ACH network are required to register limited contact information with NACHA by October 30th, 2020. With all that is happening, we all need to stick together and find solutions that work. If there's an issue you're facing, if there's a problem, an unexpected issue caused by the virus pandemic, then message or email me, kevin at paymentsprofessor.com. And we'll do our best to get the information recorded and made available to you. If you're restricted from traveling and you need us some education or continuing education credits, we're also working on some solutions as well. Let us know how we can help you through this. We are here to serve you.